Hey, orange one here. So uh, we are basically part of the Northern Empire right now, but not for very long. We're trying to get to Lucon and um, leave. I'm actually recording this and doing the commentary after the fact. Um, yeah, this was just kind of like, it took, I was curious to see how long this would take. And so I just went, wanted to play it out and, and it took a little while, it took a fair little while. And yes, that was a beverage. If you heard that, <laughs> I think you did. I wasn't going to say anything if it didn't show up in the audio, but it looks like it did. So cheers. Yeah, basically we've left him and I'm going to immediately like attack some of these dudes and go to war with them. It doesn't work out very well for me in the end. Well, it kind of does. It, it goes okay. I kind of thought about reloading it, but it was fine. So I was like, okay, I'll just attack this dude, right? And just like go to war and just start attacking their armies and clear out the countryside so that we can attack this castle that we took for the Senate. So we we're like, yes, we'll fight for the Senate. And then we're like, oh, right, we're just taking you prisoner. You literally have no troops and are hurt. You're mine. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. I love it, but it's totally ridiculous. I love the whole dynamics that come about with the emergence of this whole gameplay and everything. So Olin over here, I was like, man, I thought I had my companions over here, but it looks like one of them is fighting this big group here. And I wasn't sure if we had the numbers to do it or not. And it looks to me like it's a fight that I, if I did get into it, I, it would not go well. You know what I mean? So I figured, well, one of my companions like in like 40 troops literally just like got ate up and like, couple seconds there so I'm gonna take Owen's units as much as I can and give her some back but man not looking to lose our troops that we desperately need out here right now like we desperately need them if we're gonna uh, carve out our own country which we will by George if it doesn't stick the first time it will the second or third time probably we're not going to stop until it does work, basically. <laughs> and I think that we'll eventually get so charming that we'll be able to convince anyone to join us if we just have some money. But yeah, all of these guys, for now, they need to go. There's a bunch of them. There's at least 200 of them right there. But we can possibly split them up a little bit. You know, it looks like they're kind of running away. So there's an opportunity here, yeah, to get right in the middle and then go for the ones that are smaller, possibly. But we don't want to get them to collapse in on us and take us out. So yeah, this is a pretty good opportunity to take out not a hundred, but just under a hundred. I think that's like 80, right? Just around 80 people. Seeing how we have just under 200, total i think that's a pretty good um objective and i think i think Take i was a little bit back. more tactical on some of this but i can't remember exactly what i did yeah no Move. i told these i yeah i totally did like more tactical things it's kind of weird Marco. because i forgot that i did this with no audio and Move. then recorded with Move. audio Move. the last like three or four minutes or something like that so there might be kind of like a weird moment where we get to there and you hear two of me, right? I'll be like me with my twin, the brother lord. <laughs> so I don't know about you guys, but it's been like crazy with the whole George Floyd thing and like as a teacher it is like the weirdest thing ever because we were talking about this and like normally schools would address it in some way and try and talk about it to help people like process their feelings right but like they're not doing that at all really I mean they are they gave us some resources but they're like go explore this on your own time you have time right go do it and it's like yeah I guess so 
Um, but it's like they asked, like, what have people done in their digital virtual classrooms to help support students through this? And people were like, uh, nothing. <laughs> We've been given like no support with that. What do you expect? Oh yeah, check this out. So I'm get, trying to get up into these hills and get our archers like a nice angle on them from like the high ground. But yeah, I mean, I'm I'm thinking it's hard because like I'm a science teacher, and so people oftentimes get kind of weirded out if I want to do too much social justice because it's like that's not in your expertise. It's weird. I mean, it totally is, but. It's weird because it's like thought of as social justice as like a language arts kind of Infantry. social studies thing. Move. Move. But like, I don't know, all decisions should be based off of data, in my mind. Like, the more data that we have available to us, the more transparency in how it was collected, the more duplication of that experiment with other people confirming it, the better, you know? And that's like, for me, when I was looking at what people were saying around this, like, we need more stats collected on police. It's like, yeah, absolutely, of course you need more data. Like, yeah, we need to figure out which people are disproportionately, like, the worst at targeting people of color. You know, we need to know that. Um, but it's like, what do you do with that? Because I do worry about, like, if you're not familiar in the U.S., there's this thing called No Child Left Behind. And basically, it's like, schools, if they do bad, they get punished, essentially. Oh yeah, check out, I've got the infantry just lined up and we've got arrows just raining down on them, including my horse archers. God, we're, like, they've already lost, like, a quarter or more of their troops and they haven't even gotten to our line. Now they're just getting to our line. And look at that, look at all of those kills. And I'm tired of telling them to, uh... <laughs> I've for... I completely lost my train of thought. I'm tired of telling the commanders to do it at the end because the commanders are never vicious enough. Like, you really just want them charging at this point. And you'll kill just through your sheer advantage. And just way better than if they're cautious. It's just absurd how cautious they are at this point. But yeah, anyways, like, with No Child Left Behind, there was this huge problem because it was, like, trying to keep schools accountable. Kind of like how people are thinking about keeping police accountable. And then it ended up um, basically putting schools on notice it's like you're underserving these kids you're doing a bad job so we're going to cut funding from you in x years if you don't meet a certain goal it was just really bad because I ended up having like bad schools get less resources unless they were able to get title one money which was kind of balanced out in some people's cases but not for everyone Long story short, No Child Left Behind was an attempt at accountability on public officials that was not thought out properly, you know, and um, ended up with places like Texas where uh, teachers are getting fired or um, not getting as much of a raise based off of the test, test scores. And, you know, it's so much more than a test score. And so it's like we have to think about, like, if you have, like, a racist police department in a town that has, like, racial tension in it, they're not going to perform as well as a place that has less racial tension. So you can't put them at the neck at the same uh, performance expectation. And you can't punish the ones that are already doing better with this because they're not making as much growth. So, like, we can't be, like, punishing police departments exactly for not meeting goals, but we do need to have um, more transparency. I, I hands down agree with that. But it's just kind of crazy thinking about how the um, enforcement of fairness could go wrong. And we need to be careful about when we're talking about doing this stuff, like how do you structure that, you know? Just my thoughts as someone who's seen similar conversations in my field but as someone who recognizes that we do need to have some system i mean like it's like the whole standardized test system it's like okay yeah i get that like standardized tests are bad but we do need to have some sort of comparison of schools it's you know because like an a in 
chemistry in one school is very different than an A in a chemistry class in a different school. They try and do it with the APs, but I think everyone knows that the APs is like a band-aid on a larger problem of people coming from different schools and trying to measure who is actually a better student and who's going to be better for the college. It's, you know, a huge riddled with um, bias process, you know. Oh, Rezos, so you got more defenders. I let some of you guys get past me, unfortunately. And it's actually one of the larger armies too. Oh my god, did you guys see that? Up to the... There's like a ton of little parties attacking up there. We'll get to them. But we gotta clear out this group at 35 first. Sergeants in charge! It's really interesting now with yeah! the pushback against standardized testing, how people are like, nope, no standardized testing at all. And it's like, I... Like all things in life, I think everybody's a little bit right. And, like, there's probably a solution somewhere in the middle. <laughs> With some standardized testing, it's something that helps us understand where schools are at and where their student population is at. But also something that doesn't, like, punish people for doing bad. I mean, I don't have the answer, because I realize when I'm saying this, it's like, it sounds like I'm basically saying, like, do the impossible. <laughs> but as we know with Rodan, the impossible is, is possible. Right? I mean, he was, he went from a merchant, to just a lowly gamer. Being an almighty, um, bandit king who's now assaulting a major faction for a ca around a castle. He wants to be his own castle, so he can collect taxes. <laughs> you know, it's like, I think about like The Last Kingdom and like The Plot of The Last Kingdom, and you could totally do that in this game. And like, I think about the guy who Verdan is, and he's a scary dude, right? Like, honestly, think about this dude. He's like from the get-go since he lost his father has spent like all of his time and money on getting more money and power and now he's commanding hundreds of people in battles like and he has like millions of dinars he's richer than kings and he's controlling hundreds of people just going where he wants doing what he wants that's a pretty um pretty strange person not someone I would necessarily want to trust. <laughs> but I suppose he is a very charming leader. I mean, with moves like that, how could he not be charming, right? <laughs> I feel so bad about running people down like this sometimes, but it is way better than having them slow you down. It's like a war crime simulator, though. You know, it's like I always have that problem with it. It's like, oh, man. What I'm doing here, although pragmatic, is like something that people in real life have been executed for after, after the wars, you know? It's kind of crazy sometimes when you think about that with these games, like the war games. It's like, I'm doing like war crimes in a game. Wait, why am I doing war crimes in a game? That's kind of crazy, you know? Why am I role-playing like that? <laughs> But maybe, I think honestly, Rodan just wants money and power. He's like a corporate um, dude. He's all about corporate interests. And like an oligarchy. Like there's other playthroughs that I do it for freedom. Like the Hive is there for freedom. In Ken that Kenshi series, the Kenshi Hive, uh, Hiver series. This is not for freedom. No, no. Rudan just wants money, just wants power. I actually have already recorded the next episode after this, so like, I'm in a pretty good mood, let's just say that. Things went pretty well. I think that um, there was something weird about how I wasn't able to recruit someone while they were in a party, or while they are in an army. Oh, I think, yeah, maybe it was that... He, 
he was in an army, so I couldn't talk to him. But if they're not in armies, maybe I can still talk to the lords. In any case, I need to somehow capture and talk to smaller lords and get them to join my cause. Um, I think I, I, uh, I need some land, though, to be like, hey, you want a castle? <laughs> you want to not betray me, friend? <laughs> and I don't know, maybe play some board games or something with them to get them to like me. I actually have gotten kind of decent... Oh, there's like 200 of them there. You, you can see with the count there. So they actually have more troops than I have right now. But they're all like little parties that aren't following each other. They're like a bunch of dudes that like constantly are fighting and they can't agree on who to actually lead. So they all have like their little parties of just themselves or like eight dudes. Man, I guess democracy here... <laughs> not Not doing too well. Let's just say that, right? Um, I think that should keep on going. I'm just going to change something on some of my settings while I'm watching this. I mean, you're not going to see it, so I don't know why I'm even saying anything. But I tried to change the text size on, text size on my second monitor. Um, basically, just to help me see the numbers better but then like i don't know the formatting's all weird so i couldn't even see my recording time it's whatever it's fine um i don't see why that needs to be there but okay whatever so yeah we will clear out these guys and that is a huge army actually if you look at them compared to us they have um, more than half, maybe like two-thirds of our troops, but I think we've got much better composition, and if I'm strategic here, it should be okay. And as you can see, I'm, I'm really pulling our guys back, so we should be able to um, hold this location, take out their cab, and then go for the infantry and archers. I think that's what happened from my remember. Oh look, there's, I think, yeah, that must be horse archers. Oh, there's little camels. I didn't even see that. So they, they've got the uh, dudes that are like the mercenary for the Asari with them, with their camels. Oh, I knew that later on because I was actually looking at some of them in my party, but, you know, I didn't realize that in the moment. Right. Good. This is where we really shine with the horse archers when their their horses get trapped. You know, that's when you really get a ton of hits in. I think we've built up a decent amount of cavalry. I really should just have them charging at this point. Like I said previously, they don't charge in enough, and they are getting kills though, so we're doing okay. Did I tell them to charge or what? Line. Oh, I think I pressed the wrong button. Yeah, I got flustered here. I just wanted them to charge and I pressed the wrong button. Yeah, honestly, chase them down. There's like hardly any of them compared to our numbers. And if we just like, like I'm doing, get some hits on them, they'll start going down. insane thinking about like what this would actually be like this battle in the woods like this is like a batonian fight right here battling in the woods oh man there has to be you know there, there's something very satisfying about the hits in this game and the sound effects of people yelling when they're hit they've done a really nice job with that in bannerlord Okay, enough killing of, of um, soldiers. Gotta go after the nobles. Right. Yeah, that was pretty good though.
Definitely pretty good. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember this. We just took like a crazy amount of prisoners. I don't, I shouldn't have done this. I mean, it actually generated a good amount of money for me. <laughs> Got us over the 2 million point, but like these guys, I can't even recruit if they're in my party, which I have a problem with. You should be able to recruit people that are in your party or your castles. You know, it's interesting looking at all of these people because, like, I don't know them um, in the game, like, the characters. There's just too many NPCs to know them, really, besides, like, the leaders. Like, I, I know the kings at this point, and um, the empress, you know? But I don't know a lot of the NPCs, and I've also heard that it's random with the um, the minor factions. And so it's like no point in even trying to memorize those dudes, right? Oh, we're over our troop limit. Yeah, I mean... Honestly, we're kind of like just sustaining ourselves right now, but... I think that, you know, the hardest part right here of, take, of, start, of having a kingdom is starting it. It's holding those first few castles and getting some lords to join you. That's really pretty tricky, but, um, or at least it was in Warband. But um, I think you'll be pretty happy with how it goes in the next, in the next part and then this part. I was at least. So it's kind of weird. I don't know if I've talked about it on the channel, but like I was in the middle of moving and then my cat, she got like a back injury. Like she's had a really bad back and I've probably talked about it on here before, but she has like um, a bone growth in her back. And so we're trying to move up here to this new place. And look at all those prisoners, it's insane. And basically she needed um, just some rest after she like threw out her back and we had packed up and already moved a majority of our stuff to our new place, but she's having to just kind of rest it out at our old place. Um, we're doing it like for like four or five days just to see how she's doing. She's actually doing a lot better. I think we're gonna move her um, over the weekend because we're gonna go back up there anyways over the weekend to visit family. Um, so we'll just go up, we'll just stay up there, and then when we're done visiting family, come back down here. It's kind of the game plan. So you've got like 60 plus like 40 or 50-ish dudes just in random little parties here. I just was honestly trying to keep them away from the castle, because I wanted to siege it. I forgot if I did actually siege it at this point or not. I did. No? Maybe not. Yeah, it's it's been like actually quite a while since I actually played this because like I said I was in the middle of moving I moved all my stuff so this is actually my computer at the new place it's all set up and I'm actually just playing after I was setting up so well, not all set up but I was like unpacking boxes and stuff and like yeah there's still a ton of boxes but it's like not like I need to do it right now and I'm like I want to play some games so here I am playing some games Sieging down. We've got basically a one-to-one -one ratio, plus they've got a ton of people outside of the castle. And what am I doing here? A ram? Oh yeah, because they already have a hole in the wall. I think we were just trying to get in there. I think... I've forgotten exactly where it is. I'm probably going to have to stop talking soon, because I think at some point something weird happened with the recording. And I had to, um, I think I pressed the start button on the OBS and it start stopped it immediately and it didn't catch like the end of the episode. So that's why I had to do the other bit with commentary. Oh yeah, I did the Ongars because this place, its walls are already destroyed. So I figured I might as well just kill some of their soldiers. But I do promise by the end of this episode, we will take this castle. And I think the footage in the end was pretty good. Because I had done it previously in the footage, I hung back too far. And I actually didn't get the footage because it didn't work. 
but then I tried it again and it totally worked and it was glorious and amazing and I loved it. So yeah, it looks like already three, four people escaped from our captivity that were our prisoners. <laughs> so yeah, we can't really hold them prisoner, but they haven't got anywhere to um, spawn, I don't think, because this castle is locked down. And so, I mean, they could maybe recruit units from the villages, but they're also probably getting attacked by the Asari who... Actually, I don't know if the Asari are at war with them. In any case, they can't get enough units from those villages to fight me. Especially seeing how this place was just very recently Vlandian, and it's Vlandian from the areas that I've just been raiding and just being, in general, just not a nice person. <laughs> Oh man, good times though. I do really like this game. It has to be one of my favorites. It's a shame it's not doing better on the channel, but honestly, I enjoy playing it, so I'm not gonna cry too much. And it's good because having the Let's Play keeps me motivated to keep on coming back to the game. And then that kind of helps me push through, because sometimes this game can be a little bit repetitive. I'm sure as you guys have felt watching it. Um, it helps me to have that motivation to be like, oh man, it's gonna be so good when we can finally get that kingdom. <laughs> it's gotta be an uphill battle though. And we don't have that much more food than these guys have, so honestly, it's gonna be kind of difficult to take this place. Oh yeah, we have failed the, the quest, but it was fine because I went to the beta. I think I talk about that later on. I, I was very upset that I hadn't saved then. Yeah, as you can see, then I saved there just to have a point to know if I need to go further back, go back from that, you know? Okay, well, Olin's been captured. <laughs> the thief has been stolen. <laughs> right. I gotta have my commentary soon, right? I did do commentary in the last few minutes, didn't I? Or did I mess up the audio and not actually record myself talking? <laughs> oh man, if that is what happened, I'm gonna have a long laugh about this. I think it's fine. We've still got eight minutes left in the recording, so I'm pretty sure that the actual siege, that was why I had recorded like the actual attacking, so. Which I honestly don't think is that long uh, away from now. Gotta be any second. Because those numbers look like the numbers that I remember I attacked with. We got really lucky here because I was very concerned that we were still at war with Vlandia and that they were gonna send people up here to attack us. I think they got their hands full with the Sari though. So we're good. <laughs> totally good but we do have we do have some siege equipment there you know just about enough to start oh the numbers are similar but we got to get rid of the siege equipment we got to siege it down a little bit yeah, i think two um trebuchets is good against castle but if you want to go on guards you need more than two they just don't put out enough damage or have enough health, really. And it's more about the health that they have from getting attacked by other things. But yeah, we do have the three, so we might as well put them up and do it, right? We got a one-to-one -one ratio. We actually have prisoners there waiting to be recruited, so... Yeah, I think I ended up recruiting them because um, it's nice to keep the number advantage while you're waiting in a siege. Oh man, look at all those guys that want to join. It'd be nice to have a recruit all prisoners button. I think they've added a num number of things recently, kind of like that, but... Like you'll see in the next episode, there's a pretty cool feature that they did with the cities. Probably by the time that I upload this, it's gotta be like a month old feature though. <laughs> or that you guys see, I don't know. I'm very excited about it though in my current uh, state. 
Yeah, I think we must have um, recorded when we actually got ready to attack. I'm almost positive. But it's good to be waiting and doing this a little bit more cautiously right now, because you never know who's going to come rolling up with an army of a little bit more than you, and or maybe a number of smaller armies that can maneuver around you, you know? And then you're done. Can't really do much about it. But like right now, like we have them completely suppressed. They don't have anything. They're gonna build something soon, but we have multiple things shooting at it, and then it's gonna be only gonna be one thing, you know? Like at this point we have the numbers advantage, we have the siege advantage, we have the food advantage. The food advantage is just about gone. But we have basically everything else, so we just need to push them further down in terms of everything else, and then we're fine, you know? You gotta love that fire on guard, though, for the night sieges, you know? <laughs> but look, like, up there, there's a number of uh, troops up there making me a little nervous. Did I get the second? I think I might try and get the second hole in the wall uh, in here. But I was just kind of watching up them up there. Yeah, I mean, we have, like, all the siege equipment that we'll ever need. We've got three, three of them. Oop. Thought for a second that we were going to jump to the point where I'm, I'm talking. Not yet. Not yet. Gotta wait. Man, it, it must be, it must have been a crazy thing to have been in a siege, you know? I'm thinking about that as well with people protesting, because they're in sieges in a sense right now. Like, that's a crazy thing to be like, they're just waiting for their chance, they're just outside, you know? Pretty nerve-wracking state to be in. Yeah, I mean, at this point, we have all the siege equipment that we can really have on the field. It's like, okay, I might as well work on a second tower at the very least. And they've broken through that second wall. So it's kind of like, well, I should really probably just attack right now, you know. But we can kill a few more people. And get one more siege equipment up and running. <laughs> hey, orange one here. So uh, we are going to attack the walls here. Um, I actually am doing this like on a separate day than when I originally recorded most of this episode. Um, I have been in the process of, of moving, like my wife just got a job like on the other side of uh, Portland and so we had to move and I've been really really busy with that. Uh, but hey I'm back, I'm back in action and we're taking this uh, the city. Um, it is a pretty much a one-to-one -one ratio but they do have two holes in their walls here. So I'm anticipating that we're going to just be able to storm it. Like, honestly, like, is that my guys already getting in there? Oh, man, we're already in the walls. Look at that. They, like, literally just charged in. Hello. What's going on up here? Oh, man, look at that. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah, I'm glad I, I came in. Oh, nope, never mind. Let's get in here. Oh man, they're like totally fleeing. Let's follow. Chase them down. I think we're gonna win. Yeah. <laughs> and by I think we're gonna win, we're definitely gonna win. We're crushing these guys. Anyone in the courtyard? Nope. No one's gonna take shots at my guys. Cool. Yeah, I like this part of the game because now it's like I gotta protect my investment, my shock troopers, and make sure they don't get shot, you know? Ah, oh, speaking of which, where did that even come from? That, like up there someone someone's going down there's actually quite a few of them left we've only killed about half of them that were defending here where are the rest let's just stay near the action so you guys can see it pretty cool though i don't know how the volume is though it's always hard to get this, the volume right with this stuff oh the ai can never figure this out it's so easy to just cheese. We're gonna need to cheese it though. If we're gonna take an empire on. Oh man, we're gonna really need to cheese it. 
Okay, that's that was the people defending the gate. Now they've only got a few people in the castle walls. Or it's city walls, I should say. I can't really get in there, so. <laughs> Are they trying to flee now? Are they trying to run through? And they're trapped. Yeah, they're totally trapped. Well, um, yeah, that, that went well. <laughs> we have a castle. That's pretty sweet. Um, I... I think we should be taking these people prisoner. I'm not sure though. Yeah, we'll just take them prisoner. And then I'll be done with this episode. Um, I'm gonna just end it here. And I'll... Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for joining me. This has been Orange One.